development. Disequilibria, that's a Piagetian term. Well, this is a life is suffering idea. It's like, why learn something? Because you're wrong. Who cares? It makes you suffer. You care. So, you know, if you run out a little scheme in the world, a little action pattern, you don't get what you want. If you're, especially if you're two years old, you burst into tears and cry. And why is that? It's because you, you don't know where you are and you don't know where you, what you're doing. It's like time for some negative emotion. It indicates that you're wrong. And that's terrible in some sense because it, all, it almost always means that to learn requires pain. Now, I don't believe that exactly because people are curious, you know, and to go out and be curious and to learn new things can be very exciting. And so what it seems to be is that there's, there's a rate of learning that's too fast and that hurts you. That's what makes you cry. But if you get the rate just right, you're just opening up enough novelty so that you can benefit from the possibilities. That gives you a dopamine kick fundamentally. You can benefit from the possibilities without being overwhelmed by the, by the unexpected element of it. And you can tell when that's happening. And this is one of the coolest things as far as I'm concerned. This is, and, and I learned this partly from Piaget. It's like, you know, in order to withstand suffering, let's say your life has to have some meaning. Okay, well, that, that means a bunch of things. It means that part of the way that you overcome suffering is by making the suffering into something meaningful. And, and I don't mean that metaphysically. I mean it technically. You made a mistake. It causes you suffering. You learn something about it. You don't make that mistake again. It's real adaptation. It's not, it's not defense against death anxiety or something like that. It's real adaptation. But more importantly, the... Reality that you learn through pain is the oldest reality, we'll say. It's, it's really old. It's as old as nervous systems. And so you've adapted so that you've learned tr to transform your knowledge structures in a way that will minimize your potential exposure to future pain at a rate you can tolerate or maybe even enjoy. And so what's happening is you don't actually like being static. It bores you. But you don't like being thrown into chaos. It's like, no little bit of that's fine. What you want is you want to be opening up your knowledge structures on the periphery to transformation, voluntary transformation. That's voluntary exploration. And letting those things manifest a little bit of interesting chaos. And so you have a little bit, you put a little feeler out there that you're willing to let die. And it comes apart and you gather a bit of information. It comes back together stronger. And you do that all the time if you're, if you're smart and you're looking for new information, foraging for new information. And that means you keep taking little bits of yourself apart and reconstructing them. And over time, that keeps you alive and active. You know, part of the reason you're alive is because you're dying all the time, right? All the cells in your body, like if they don't die, you get cancer and that, that's it, you're, you're done. You're a very, very tight balance between death and life at every, every single level including the cognitive level. And it's not that fun to learn something because you have to kill something you already know in order to learn it. That's another Piagetian observation. Because you're always interpreting something within a structure. And if that interpretation is wrong, even in a micro way, you have to kill that structure. And it's a biological structure. It actually hurts to kill it. But maybe you can generate something new in its stead. And if you get the dynamic right, let the rate right, then you find that exhilarating, not painful. And that's, and that's, well, you can tell when you're doing that. As far as I can tell, you can tell when you're doing that because you're engaged in the world in a meaningful way. And what your nervous system is doing is signaling to you that you're not in a static place, that's death. You're not in a chaotic place, that's death. You're balanced between the static and the chaotic such that the static structures are transforming at exactly the right rate to keep you on top of the environmental transformations. And so you're surfing. You know, in, in Hawaii, surfers, surfing was sacred. Well, that's why. It's like, do you, can you tell someone how to surf? Well, you can't, because they have to go out there and dynamically interact with the wave. But they can stay on top of the wave. And that's what you have to do. And if you're staying on top of the wave properly, then it's exhilarating. And that's the kind of meaning that, that it, 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 it rejuvenates you, literally. It makes you able to tolerate the suffering in life. And it's not metaphysical precisely it's because that is what you're doing at that moment you're you're overcoming your limitations and of course that's what you have to do in order to to know and to learn because you want to be doing both of those things at the same time that's what you do when you play a game properly your parents say doesn't matter whether you win or lose this is a piagetian observation it's how you play the game what does that mean 
Well, it means that you should play the game in a manner that increases the probability that you're going to be invited to play many games in the future. Perfect. So you master the skills of the game, but at the same time you master a set of meta skills, which is the skills that remain constant across transforming sets of games. And that's what it means to play fair. That's the bloody basis of morality as far as Piaget was concerned. It's so damn smart, you know, because you think all interactions have this game-like quality. They're sort of bounded. And, but there are commonalities across all the games. And you want to extract out the commonalities and you want to learn to inhabit the universe that's made out of the commonalities between games. And that's what it means to be a good person, roughly speaking. You know, it varies to some degree from culture to culture, obviously, because each culture is a game unto itself. But there's something that transcends that, that's the nature of games across game contexts. And you know that you know that, because you can tell the difference between a game and, an, and something that isn't a game instantly. Everyone knows, and it's not like there's only one kind of game. There's hockey, say, and there's, there's a, a, a World of Warcraft. I know it's way out of date, but so am I, so it's not surprising. So, but the fact that those things are very, very different in, in many, many ways doesn't stop you from identifying the underlying commonalities. You know they're games, and they're, they're like stories, in a sense. So, and that's a Piagetian, that's a Piagetian uh, observation. Very, very smart.